Guys, welcome to this episode of Reality Check. I'm Meng Guan from the capital city of Montenegro in southern Europe. Now, China's infrastructure projects overseas came under great scrutiny over the years and decades. The highway behind me, for example, the Bar Bajali Highway that's connecting Montenegro south to the north came under great scrutiny. There has been so much negative press, so much controversy. An expensive road to nowhere. The ambitious plan, bankrolled by massive loans from China, has become an economic dead end for Montenegro. It's now become the country's highway to hell. The decision to build here was a mistake. Just to be fair, as journalists, we thought what better way to verify some of these claims than to actually come over here and see for ourselves. First of all, for God's sake, it's not a road to nowhere. It does have a starting point at Montenegro's Mediterranean port of Bard and ends at its northern city of Bojali at the Serbian border. The first section, also the most difficult one to build, is now complete, with more to boot, of course. And once all done, it will be the first highway in Montenegro's history. But why a new highway? Well, just look at this old one, a path Montenegrins themselves have called the Death Road. This is the drive on a good day, and it's supposed to be a two-lane expressway. But oops. On a rainy day, the narrow path along the Malatza River Canyon, one of the deepest in Europe, can be dangerous or deadly to be exact. In the past decades, around 1,200 people died in car accidents on the old road, according to official data. These flowers were tribute to those who died over the years. Now, this is the new highway built by China Road and Bridge Corporation or CRBC with its local partners. It's a dual three-lane driveway. It's wider, it's smoother, and trust me, more importantly, it feels safer. For those Western journalists who claimed years ago that this would be a highway to hell, I highly recommend that they come here and drive on it as I did. We are going north, exactly to the north of Montenegro, through the first 40 kilometers of the highway built through the mountains. Going through the first tunnel? Yeah. Wow. You know, I've been to quite some tunnels. I lived in the US for eight years. Um, in China, I travel all over the place. This is, this is as good as any of the tunnels that have been. It's really nice. You know, driving here, thinking that from the, the port city of Bar in the south of Montenegro all the way to the Serbian border is only going to take, what, two hours with this yeah. highway when it's all completely done. Without a highway, it would take, it currently takes, what? Uh, depending who is driving. A day. <laughs> uh, well, for good drivers, it takes uh, six hours to Belgrade. For not so good, good drivers... It would, it would take me 10 hours. <laughs> uh, it would take 12 for me, so... <laughs> To build a highway, China offered Montenegro a 20-year loan at an interest rate of 2% with a six-year grace period. Some friends in the West are insinuating that China somehow forced this infrastructure project and the financing plan on Montenegro to foster political dependence. I asked that question to the president of Montenegro. Mr. President, many Western media outlets accused this project of being China's quote-unquote debt trap diplomacy. Do you look at that way? Negle. Dakle, ocjene koje ste interpretirali, postojali su razni drugi potencijalni partneri. Jedan je bila Europska investiciona banka, druga je bio Turski konzorcijum Dogoš Gulsan, treći je bio američko Turski konzorcijum Bechtelenka, postojalo je interesovanje i njemačkih partnera. Međutim, kada smo nakon jedne vrlo transparentne procedure prikupljanja ponuda od strane zainteresovanih partnera iskomparirali te ponude, došli smo do apsolutno nedvosmislenog saznanja da je najbolja ponuda koju ne je ponudila kineska kompanija CRBC. But how much of a debt burden is it really for this small European country? Patroslav Belan was advisor to the Deputy Prime Minister of Montenegro on financial affairs. And Mr. Belan, you know this better than I do. There are concerns about the nature of this loan and whether or not it creates excessive debt burden 
on no, a part of no, Montenegro. I, I, Some call it I that trap to, diplomacy. I have you know? to, to oppose that Montenegrin economy is very stable. Uh, it is stable, and uh, we can uh, we we can afford us to to do all our, all our duties or all uh, fin financial duties uh, regarding that that loan. Today, with a Google search of China Montenegro, top headlines still revolve around how expensive this highway is, as if Montenegro has been ripped off or overcharged. Unfortunately, these comparisons are not correct because in order to correct uh, to compare. The price you need to take uh, similar infrastructure projects. This project it's 40 kilometer long, but uh, it's 60 percent is in the bridges and in the tunnels. And in order to compare it, you need to find similar project in the Alps, and then to compare the price. You're comparing apples and two apples. Right? Exactly to compare apples, not apples and frogs. <laughs> apples and frogs. Now to compare apples to apples, let's do some research. China constructed Bar Bojali Highway in Montenegro cost around 20 million euros per kilometer. Where does it stand? According to World Highway, Germany and Austria, two countries situated along the Alps, spend an average of 28.9 million euros and 27.8 million euros per kilometer on their highways. Romania spent 34 million euros per kilometer for its mountainous Transylvania highway. And France spent 133 million euros per kilometer to rebuild a highway in its hilly Reunion Island. Now, instead of pointing fingers and throwing double standards, perhaps it's time our Western journalist friends approach this story slightly differently from their favorite angle, the human angle. In the past seven years, tens of thousands of Chinese and Montenegrin workers toiled through the heat of summer and the dead of winter in one of the toughest mountainous terrains in Europe. Just imagine the amount of work involved in drilling through 16 tunnels and building 20 bridges to construct this highway. These are not faceless laborers. They have families and loved ones too. They chose to leave them behind to work in a foreign land. So next time people write about this highway or drive on it, perhaps they can spare a thought for these builders too.